Welcome to the Sports Pharmacy Podcast. My name is Dr. H and I am your host. I am a wellness pharmacist, pharmacy owner, and certified sports nutritionist. Join me while we discuss a wide range of topics ranging from health and wellness, sports, and even some small business secrets. Feel free to join our Discord for more interactions with me and other fellow listeners. Now let's get into the show. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. H coming from the Sports Pharmacy Podcast. I have a great person that I'm very excited to have on today. I have with me Dr. Taylor Gardner. How are you, Taylor? Hey, I'm good. Thanks for having me. You know, it's really rare that I get to see her during the weekend. Generally, I see her during the week when uh, she's working in the pharmacy for me at Stonebriar. Um, so it's really cool to see you. And uh, and we, we, we were just chatting a little bit about our weekend and all sorts of fun stuff that was going on. So Taylor, why don't you, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I'm Taylor. Um, I, a brief background about myself. I'm from Wyoming. I grew up in Sheridan, Wyoming. Um, went to school at the University of Wyoming um, where I got my undergrad and then they actually had a pharmacy school on campus. Um, so nice. continued on to pharmacy school. Uh, met my husband there and his job brought him to Dallas. So uh, moved to Dallas permanently just a couple of years ago. We went back and forth for a while. Um, so yeah, now this is where we call home. Um, we've got two little ones and I just recently got to start working again, which has been awesome. Um, That's a good answer. Yeah. That's a good answer yeah. to say. Yeah. Yeah. You, gotta yeah. say yeah. you have to say it's awesome. You have to, you have to say no. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Taylor's uh, University of Wyoming. Uh, tell us a little bit. I'm, so I've I've been all over the country. I have never been to Wyoming. You gotta go. I mean, I don't know if I, I've seen pictures of what you showed me. It doesn't look very. Yeah, that's also yeah, I was gonna say, so. don't look at the pictures right now because I'm pretty <laughs> sure we were just laughing. So Wyoming, for some reason, has mm-hmm. had an awful winter. Um, and the interstate that we used to drive on um, between two of the towns in college, it's like a one lane with snowdrifts, like ten feet tall. And I'm like, that's no, like, thanks. don't look at Wyoming right now. Like, go oh. in the summer if you're gonna go. But it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Is uh remind me Jackson Hole is in Wyoming, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, it's like in the upper left hand corner. Um where I grew up is, you know, um east of that. And then mm-hmm. Laramie is in where we went to college, is in okay. the not so pretty part. Um it's nice. in the southern part of the state. Nice, okay. Um, so yeah, it's not as pretty, but yeah. So uh a buddy of mine owns a pharmacy in uh in Jackson, Wyoming. Uh, he was on, his name is James. He was on with me not too long ago. He went to school with me and I have no idea how he ended up in Wyoming, but he's super happy out there. Yeah. Yeah. So pharmacy, so undergrad, uh, so Taylor was a, uh, track and field star in undergrad, as I like to put it. Um, she ran the sprints. She both did the, 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 the four by four and the one by four or four hundreds was hurdles, right? Yeah. So I did the 400 hurdles was my primary event. Um, and then I was on both of the relay teams too. So tell us a little bit about being a college athlete, what that was like as you're trying to take your undergrad yes. classes. So, um, the way it worked out, I mean, I look back and I'm just like, it's the perfect testament that everything just works out the way it's supposed to, um, going back to high school as a three sport athlete. So I played volleyball, basketball, and track, um, track was my least favorite. I loved mm-hmm. basketball the most. Um, okay. so when I started talking, you know, people were like, I was good at track though. Um, So when my coaches kind of started mentioning that I could go on to run track, I'm like, why, why would I want to do that? (laughs) Um, So then I was hurt my junior year, which is the primary year for um, recruiting. So since I was hurt my junior year, I actually almost didn't even go out for track in my senior year. I was like, I'm too good. Like I'm I'm done. I'm too cool for track. I want to go into college. (laughs) I want to like have the perfect college life, you know, like what everyone portrays. So Thankfully, um, my parents encouraged me to, you know, they were like, this isn't, per- you, you try it for one year. Mm-hmm. So I signed super late. I think I was the last one to sign, um, like in June or July, right before training started. Um, and it just, again, it, it, it all worked out how it was supposed to. I really attribute track um, to my success. You know, there's, there's a lot of parallels that you can um, have mm-hmm. between athletics and life, as you know. Um, mm-hmm. But I attribute a lot of my success in all realms of my life to athletics and track specifically. Um, yes. It's it's different in college being a, a college athlete. I mean, there's, I still had lots of fun, um, but you know, you're already under a microscope as an athlete. And then yep. on top of that, you're expected to do the same in the classroom, if not better, 
while also, um, you know, traveling and being gone and missing days. And, um, so you're, again, you're just, you're just held to a higher standard. Um, but it was a blast. I mean, I met my best friends in, in college and in track. I, I don't know what my life would have looked out, looked like without track. Um, and then I was actually hurt. So I, I went through my freshman, sophomore, junior year. I got hurt again. Um, mm -hmm. Another stress fracture in my foot, which signed me the whole, the whole um, season. It was, it was not fun. For that long, really? I guess when, when you're running yeah. track, it's, that's really it important. horrible. You know? And it was in, yeah. it's called your navicular bone. I would have never mm -hmm. known that bone before, um, but it doesn't have blood flow. It's like one bone in your foot that does not get blood mm. flow. So the recovery, a lot of people actually have to go and have surgery to have it pinned. Um, mm -hmm. Thankfully, I did not have to, but I was in a hard cast and on crutches. I think it ended up being 16 weeks. Wow. And it was, Man. In, it was horrible. It was horrible. Goodness gracious. Wow. And it was in the winter time in Laramie, Wyoming. So mm. I was like, this was before they had the cool little scooters, you know, that you put yeah. your knee up on. And yeah. So I was on crutches, like hopping oh my my way to class. <laughs> what a mess. It, it was not very fun. But um, I was back. I mean, it's like parallel back to where I was in high school. Um, mm. I had a fifth year option as I was hurt. Um, and I was just like, I'm over this. I knew I was going to pharmacy school. I had been accepted. I was just like, I don't want to do this. I just want to be a student. I want to hone in on my career and be done. Well, then my coach came around and said, you realize that, you know, if you were to run and do your fifth year, that your scholarship will pay for pharmacy school. Now we're talking. So I was like, okay, <laughs> my arm, right? So, yeah. um, I did it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know how your pharmacy, I mean, pharmacy school is hard. Any doctoral program is hard. Yep. Ours, um, the first year, they kind of called like the introduction year. Like it was, right. it was very difficult, but yeah. compared to the second and third year, it was quote unquote easier. Um, yeah. So I was just like, you know, I can, I can do it. We can do it. Um, so I did it. I look back nice. and I'm like, I don't know how I did it at times uh, because with track, we're, uh, we have two seasons essentially. So we had an indoor season and an outdoor season. So okay. our indoor season would start in December um, and go until March. And then March to June would be our outdoor season. And so I knew the first semester, you know, I could do it. It was, you know, practice and stuff. I would have to work around, but I wouldn't be gone. But okay. come spring, I was gone pretty much. I mean, Thursday through Sunday, every single week. Um yeah. So it was, it was a grind and, um, I'm so thankful I did it for so many reasons. I ended up having my best year in track that year, um, mm -hmm. as well as doing great in school. And honestly, mm -hmm. I think they just, they work together and I had to miss out on some things, but, um, I really, truly, I mean, going back to the whole wellness thing, um, mm -hmm. I think that track was the reason that I was able to excel in school and vice mm -hmm. versa. Um, mm -hmm. And I still, you know, we can we can go on to talk about workouts and all of that. I'm very <laughs> passionate about that. But um, I always look back and I'm like, those were that was probably one of the more stressful time, you know, stressful mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. I was gone. I was trying to do well in school. I was trying to do well in track. Um, and they just they they helped each other out. And I truly think that's because um, track gave me a release, an outlet from school. Oh, yeah. No matter what. I mean, I could have had, you know, finals week, super stressful. I had to study, but I had to go to practice. I had yeah. to step away. I Good outlet. Go spend time with my friends, teammates. Mm -hmm. I got a great workout in. And then I, you know, was able to come back with a more clear head. And I think I probably was then able to get through what would have taken me four or five hours and a couple hours and call it good. So mm -hmm. anyway, um, again, I don't want to say that it was, it was not easy. Yeah, um, sure. I mean, first, first year of pharmacy school is, is hard enough. And for some people making that transition between, you know, undergrad study habits to, to pharmacy school, exactly. it's, it's tough, right? Exactly. And I mean, I, for me, I had a hard time because this was my, I was in a different state and I was, I couldn't imagine doing a, being an athlete as well on top of that. But I mean, Taylor, if anybody can do it, it sounds like that you, you were able to, to, to get that balance. And, and you're right. There are good outlets uh, to get away from school and to kind of get away mm -hmm. from the stress. 
mm-hmm. and there's also the more negative side, right? The, 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 the I want to say the partying side. Exactly. Uh, to, yeah, exactly. So it's, to, it's to help getting away from it. So that's that's really cool. So um, to, to go back a little bit about the, the stress fracture in your foot. Now, mm-hmm. um, for me, I, 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 don't, I don't play club ball, right? So I, I never never broached the the school level because, you know, can't all, can't all be that good. <laughs> um, so with, with the, the rehab that came with it was, was that something the school was working with you on? And as far as like, like the, like, what, what was that like? The, the rehab? Yeah. Part? So, um, that was what the crappy thing about stress fracture was. There was nothing they could do for me for the first, again, like 16 or 18 weeks, except just put it in a hard cast and hope that it heals. Um, I actually, I wish I knew what it was called now. I had like a it was new at the time. It was like fresh off the market. The, yeah. the only thing they were able to do, they, they sawed a, a hole in my cast. And it was like a bone stimulator to try to increase the blood flow. But again, that was really it. I, you know, I biked and um, I tried to do that. There's so much you can do, man. Your yeah, feet are that important. Exactly. There's only yeah. so much you can do. Exactly. Especially when it is track and it's like you rely on the lower half of your body the most. Like right. I can do, you know, upper body or whatever, but that really wasn't helping me. Um, yeah. The hardest part was after the cast came off. I truly thought I was never going to walk again. Yeah, <laughs> really that bad. Like a limp foot. Uh-huh. I couldn't <laughs> lift it up. And you just, you forget how many like muscles, mm-hmm. tiny little muscles, yeah. that, you know, that help you to walk, that allow you to walk. Um, so that was the hardest part. I remember my first day of rehab. I think I my, my task was trying to curl my toes around little marbles and move them into a great like grains of rice like a bowl and it was just it was it was horrible but i got back and again i think i think uh the fact that i had to just start at ground zero and -hmm. work my way up um Mm -hmm. it was probably better for me in the long run because i was able to really hone in on the smaller tasks and then eventually work my way up and i again i came back stronger than I was before. So it was a blessing in disguise, but we, uh, I actually have a, uh, podiatrist that's going to be coming on here in the future to talk more yeah. about, about feet injuries. Cause one of, one of my big injuries as well, when I was playing soccer was I actually had a hairline fracture on the top of my right foot too, yeah. uh, where I caught a guy's cleat when I was shooting oh, the ball. It was a big wow. mess. And similar to you, there was like, they told me the same thing. They really yeah. couldn't do anything. They just said, just let it heal. But, um, luckily I broke one of the bigger ones. So it was, it was able to heal a little bit faster. That's nice. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, both Dr. Corbin and Dr. Sheth are going to come on and, awesome. and tell us more about like sports injuries and stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's really cool. That's great. All right. So let's transition a little bit. So mm-hmm. university of Wyoming mm-hmm. track star, uh, pharmacy school, <laughs> pharmacy school. What year did you graduate pharmacy school again? In 2017. Nice. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, farm school, fun stuff, right? Such fun stuff. Yes. Did you get, would you ever do it again? I think so. I'm a, I'm oh, really? a weird one. I'm a weird one. I love school. And oh, God. That's why I had, no, I had never stepped foot in a pharmacy before, but I was ready. I got my undergrad in physiology. Um, okay. And so I knew I wanted to do like something medical, um, yeah. but I just, I love school. So I, yeah, I probably would. I probably wouldn't be so crazy. I was like one of those. I studied so much and like. Oh God! Probably you and I, I Taylor. Was probably you and I are the exact opposites. <laughs> no, it's, just, it's like you and I are exact opposites, man. Exactly. I I couldn't exactly. wait. To, I I graduated in 2012, and man, I was like, I couldn't wait to get out. I was like, Yeah, you're ready. All right, so let's let's move forward. So you graduated 2017. Uh, I believe you told me you were working for Costco for a little while. That's what you were doing for a little bit. Yeah. Um, only reason I remember this is because I had to review a resume before I hired you. So yeah. just everybody yeah. knows that she is hired. Nobody even tried to take her. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, you, you mentioned traveling a lot with your husband for his job. Landed back here in Dallas. Um, now you're married, have two beautiful kids, uh, which is always great to see. They're just not just north of north of me where I live in Frisco. Um, so that's really cool. So so being a mom and being a professional. Um, I feel like it's like my mother had to do it right. She, she had me and my little brother and she was still working full time and, mm-hmm. and, you know, taking over the world in her own way. So what is that like being trying to work as a professional and, um, caring for your family as well? Cause I, I, I love the stories that you always share with me. Yeah. Um, this is, I feel like this is a topic I could do a whole podcast in. <laughs> it's something that truly as a woman, I mean, I am going to take, you know, put women on a, on that pedestal for a little bit. Hey, that's why you're here. Please go. Um, You know, you go in without, before kids, 
it's like you have your professional life Mm -hmm. and you just think you have a child and it's just like you get right back into it and I think a lot of it um the U.S. does not have great postpartum care for mothers Mm -hmm. Um, maternity leave in my opinion is a joke that they Mm -hmm. give three months but that's you know that's that's our normal Mm -hmm. and so when I was pregnant with my first son Cam um I was killer cam as I call him yeah killer cam Uh, (laughs) I was working at Costco just part-time I I mean it was great um and I was under this idea that when Cam turned three months, I was, you know, we're going to figure out childcare and I was going to jump right back into it because that's what the U.S. does. And three months rolled around and I had this tiny little baby still. And I'm like, what do you mm-hmm. mean it's time to go back to work? Like, mm-hmm. I'm not ready. So I was very fortunate, in fact, that I was. I was able to step away um, and be a full-time mom, which was amazing. Um, especially because given my husband's job, he, we were going back and forth to California. So there was really just no way to make it work. I mean, I could either stay in Dallas and work with Cam and go back and forth to see my husband. Um, or I could try to find a job in California, but knowing that wasn't home. Um, so I stepped away and I was a full-time mom. So, um, fast forward two years later, we had another child. Um, his name was Cade (laughs) and, um you know go through the whole I knew what to expect more the second time around Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and I think it's so hard because you know you have this spectrum between a stay-at-home mom all the way to a full-time working mom and everything in between which I the only one I haven't experienced is a full-time mom like shout out to all the full-time moms who work yeah man shout out to full-time moms man I don't know how they do it I don't know how you do it I I asked my mom next my mom was the same like how did you do it I just don't understand um but I think again it's one of those scenarios that if 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 you have to do it you you find a way and that's the Mm -hmm. power of women is we always find a way um I agree, hundred percent. I my wife's got it; she'll figure it out, man. She's if I ever exactly. need help, she's, she'll you figure do. it out. Yeah. And I think, though, what is so hard, and especially with social media, um, mm-hmm. just exacerbates it, mm-hmm. is this comparison game. That when all of a sudden you're a mom, it's like you are worried about. I mean, we're natural caretakers, right? So we're worried about everything. I mean, from A to Z and everything in between. And we try to, we compare ourselves like, well, she's working full time. Well, I need to work full time. Well, she gets to stay at home. I need to stay at home. My kids are behind. Someone else is raising them at daycare. I don't get to, you know, it's like you, you play this game. And um, as a full time mom, I did that um, because a lot of the women that I was surrounded by were full time stay at home moms. And of course you look at these women and you're like, why am I not happy being with my kids all the time? Like this, I should feel so fortunate. I get to wake up to them. I get to put them to bed. I get to see everything in between and something was missing. And so, um, you know, everyone talks about balance and you got to find a good balance. I don't think there's ever a good balance when you have kids and you're a mom and you're working because if you're at work, you feel guilty that you're not with your kids. If you're at home, you, you want to work. Um, but that was a huge component that me personally, I had to stop comparing and, um, you know, why can't I just be happy being a stay at home mom and realize that every scenario is different and you have to find what is best for you. And me I I finally came to terms with some of my traits or like I worked so hard in school. I went to pharmacy school for a reason. I got my doctorate for a reason. I have this like internal motivation. I'm very goal, you know, goal driven. I needed that piece of my life back. Um, So I finally, you know, was like, I got to start working. Like I, I want to do this for me to give me a purpose. Um, So anyway, I mean, Long story short, it's it's a balancing act, and you find yeah. what works for you, um, mm-hmm. and you have your tribe, and you rely on them. And some days, most days, I feel like I'm in a tornado with my children. <laughs> <laughs> we embrace the craziness. Uh, and the, that's uh, good. That's good. Again, I know, just like you said, your mom and I say with my mom, like, how did they do it? I know. Nah, that I don't they, know. My kids are probably going to be the same way, and I'll be like, you know, we got through it the best that we could, and it probably could have been better, but yeah. we did it. So here we I think are. <laughs> some people, some people would love to hear about the whole 
gap in the resume and, and how difficult that is to make that transition. Mm -hmm. um, Taylor, do you remember on your resume, you probably do, what it said in a part of the reason why the oh. great pharmacy manager at Stonebriar Pharmacy wanted to reach out to you? What was it you put I on there? Do. I do remember. I put myself <laughs> down as a household manager. And I, I will tell you what, that <laughs> gap in my resume caused me so much anxiety because it's uh, sure. the U.S. And I could go on and on, um, but it's the U.S. And I think... You think so? I well, okay. Back up. My husband is from Germany, so that right. is the that's the only country that I really compare it to, where uh -huh. women have up to two years paid maternity leave. That's, that's uh, awesome. They have post. You know, I mean, there's this whole realm that it's yeah. just, You don't have to explain it. I guess yeah. that, that your job has to hold your you know your job yeah. for you. Uh, so maybe I shouldn't put the U.S. on blast like that. But that's okay. I think it's hard because again, going back to motherhood, that. I will say it until I'm blue in the face. Being a stay-at-home mom has been the hardest job I've ever had. That that <laughs> I believed it. I believed it. Includes, and I never. I was. Oh. I was one of those ones that you know, as my friends were having kids, or I was younger and you know, in college, I'm like, oh, you're, you know, aren't you so lucky? You get to stay home with your kids all day, thinking it looked like sleeping in and watching movies all day. And but the fact of the matter is, it is a job. That doesn't end. I mean, it truly, truly does. Well, sure. Yeah. Um, which again, I am so thankful. I I love my children so much. But going back to the resume, I was like, I have not worked in however you know two, three years. What mm -hmm. I'm? This is a doctorate position. How am I? There's there's new drugs that are out. There's new guidelines that are out. It's a career that you have to keep up with. And so I was like, how am I going? I mean, because again, I just to get your foot in the door, you have to show that you've been doing something right. That's what they harp on in school. Yep. Just show yep. that you've been staying relevant. You've been staying up to date. So of course I turned to a good friend, Google and do a good Google search and how to fill my resume. So I wish I would have screenshotted it because it was like 10 or 12, like words or phrases, you know, that you could, you could use. And it was actually a LinkedIn article. So I'm like, okay, this sounds, sounds good. legit. This seems yeah. legit. <laughs> well, I think I ended, I, oh, it took me forever. I talked to my husband, my mom. I'm like, which one sounds like the most professional way to say yeah. stay at home mom. So yeah. what I did, I put, I put myself as a household manager because that's what yeah. I do. And then yeah. I think I even put a description in like what all I've done. And I look back yep. like, once I had typed everything out, cause I just kind of went, you know, like keyboard crazy, like typed everything out and kind of what my responsibilities are. And I mean, that included various moves cross country and keeping the kids mm -hmm. in check and all of that. And I was like, dang, I have more under this job description than I yeah. have under anything else. Um, <laughs> so anyway, to all my stay at home moms, household manager. Is household manager. I, I, Taylor, I sent... <laughs> I sent that screenshot to my mother, to my wife, uh -huh. to my attorney, because he didn't believe me, and also my business partner. I was like, this is, this is perfect. And I, I, I'll be honest, I, I, I mean, I, I reached out, right? Like, we, we interviewed you, and yeah. um, and I was like, yeah, easy. Let's go. I Let's know. Fly. It's so funny, because I, I joke about it, but I'm like, I look at the parallels of, like, how you can show any company what you're mm -hmm. capable of. I mean, multitasking. Yep. You yep. can, you know, you're, there's, there's so many organization to and from, I mean, there's just so many things that parallel that once I like stepped away from the fact that I'm like, this is so silly. Why would I do this? I'm like, why isn't everyone doing this? I agree. And that's, and it's pretty similar. I remember, I, I think I sent you the article I was reading when they were talking about, you know, yes. how important it is to fill that hole in there. And, and I, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't think companies hold that against people. I, I, I truly don't. And more people that I've spoke with in the business world will will appreciate that because I if you can that. have yeah. your home in order, it's easy to have my business in order, right? And exactly. I, it's evident. Is, it's evident. Yes. Yeah, it's evident by how much you care about my business and our, our business here. So it's 100%. that's really cool. Yeah, I appreciate that. How is it working at uh, Good Old Stonebriar Pharmacy? It's been so great. Yeah. I love it. So this was another like very loaded question because <laughs> I could go on and on. No, That's, oh, I, mean, I appreciate that. I mean, no, it is, it's just so. I mean, Stonebriar is. I mean, it's independent pharmacy, which I love. Um, 
but I guys, think, I'm not paying her to say all this. Yeah, I just right? want to make yeah. sure yeah. we're being clear about this. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh, the biggest thing that I struggle with as a pharmacist is I am a very, I've become, I should say, a very like all-encompassing sort of healthcare provider. So yes, absolutely medications, pharmaceutical medications are necessary with an asterisk, you know, in certain situations. Yep. And that's what I have had the most fun at Stonebriar because there's so much more, the wellness component, that's a very large encompassing component, but mm-hmm. we have supplements that can help. I mean, but the whole mind, brain, body, um, it's just you're able to practice that as a pharmacist in a much more like all encompassing way, which I love. Um, and you get to know your customers, which I also love, um, rather than just feeling like you're just shoveling out medications and never really getting to talk to patients or get to know patients. Um, and then you never really know the, the result either. So. Um, yeah, I've, it's been great. It's been a huge learning experience for me. Um, because in pharmacy school, there's, there's so much you can do with pharmacy, but in pharmacy school, just because of time constraints, and this is the most common way you're either retail or you're more clinical, like in a hospital setting. And I want to say we had like a couple labs on compounding and that's it. And it's so glad that the world, I mean, I'm sure you could go on and on about this, um, oh, yeah. being the owner and working in compounding, but it's just so sad that here compounding is a way to make pharmaceutical medications specifically for a person, a person, not a group of like, it is for tailored individually for a person mm-hmm. to help with side effects and to help maximize therapeutic benefit. But The FDA just, I mean, it's just, it's so sad that they like, you know, put compounding pharmacy and individualized medicine down like they do. Um, So I mean, from that aspect, again, I love it. Um, We we both know there's not, there's, when we talk about compounding, we know the money is specifically for the pharmacy, right? So I I think that's, that's probably why, you know, the FDA, I don't want to say frowns on it, but more of just doesn't want to endorse yeah, it because, you know, yeah. it's, not, you know yeah. it's always about money, Taylor. It is. Always. It is. It's always, always about money. And again, I'm just yeah. thankful that you do what you do and the patients are so behind the pharmacy. And um, it's just one of those sorts of medicine or pharmacy that once you try it, I think you really mm-hmm. start to realize like, okay, pharmaceuticals can be so much more individualized and beneficial when you're looking at one person rather than just, you know, shoveling out the same sort of generic prescription for everyone. So yeah. So always go local. Always go, go local. Let's, always go local. That's what we always stress. Yes. Out. Yes. Come see us. Yeah. Um, the last thing uh, we want to talk about your January and I watched your, in both your Instagram feed where you can find Taylor, where do you find you on Instagram, Taylor? Um, what is my name? I think it's Taylor underscore G five twenty. Okay. So it's at Taylor underscore G five twenty. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll put that in the description so yeah, you can yeah. have more followers on there. Yeah. And every, every day in January were was was pictures of. I'm gonna put the the word quotes around food. <laughs> if that's okay with you, I just listen. I you you know me of being a foodie. Um, yes. Tell us about Whole Thirty, man. How was how was Whole Thirty the month of January? Ooh, Whole Thirty was an experience. Um, it was not my idea. I will preface it with that. Um, <laughs> So for those that aren't familiar with Whole30, very generally, Whole30 is 30 days with no added sugar, no grains, no beans, um, nothing artificial, nothing. I mean, it is whole foods. You have fruits, you have vegetables, you could eat potatoes. Um, Was there proteins too? Protein. Protein, okay. Yes, so meat for everything. Got it. Um, It was, I had said this on my Instagram wrap up too. I didn't do it. We didn't do it. I did it with a group, um, a family. We didn't do it to lose weight or anything. We simply did it for a mental challenge because my husband and I are huge dessert people. I mean, after every (laughs) meal, we were reaching for dessert. And um, 
we just wanted to try it out. So anyway, we jumped on the whole 30 train. We did it. We were, we did it for 30 days. We all did it. Um, it was, again, I go back to this like mind, brain, body thing. I guess my biggest takeaway is food is medicine. And it really made me realize that, you know, back up whole 30 is not sustainable. That is not something that you could Please preface it by saying that. Please. Yeah, thank you. exactly. This yeah. was a 30 day challenge and that is it. Mm-hmm. What I will say is that it, it made me look at food labels more. It really made us realize how much sugar is in everything. Um, the sugar withdrawals that we went through was something that I had never experienced before. Um, I would say it was like around day 10 we were all, I mean, thankfully, again, you did, we did it with the group. Um, we were tired. We were angry. We mm. were just irritable. I mean, you can just tell like sugar does crazy things to your body. Yeah. Um, but I will say we got through it. We learned a lot. Um, we're back to eating sweets. Like we're nice. back to ourselves. <laughs> um, hey man, you did, you did the 30 days. It counts. Yeah, we're done. We cashed yeah. in. Um, yeah. But it just, my husband has had, multiple knee surgeries and he has always had issues with his knee and lo and behold after 30 days he was virtually pain-free i didn't get the afternoon slumps that i got you know usually around two o'clock i'm like guzzling coffee because i'm like Mm -hmm. put me to sleep now didn't get that we were sleeping better i mean it was again it was just it was a great mental challenge um Mm -hmm. because amongst those you know january we had kids birthday parties we had family in town and we were just like we're doing it was your husband's birthday in there too right yes he didn't even get that's uh, yes so we were like before we did this we're like hey my husband's birthday is january 19th we'll be in the thick of it we're gonna cheat like if we're doing this we are cheating for one day well, January 19th came around and we were like, we can't do it. Like, we cannot. We're in this. We're in yeah. this too far. Yes. In. Yeah, um, but two-thirds of the way through, you can't just give it up. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it definitely mentally, mental toughness was huge. Um, but it was great. I mean, if anyone needs pointers or recipes, we made a new meal every day for 30 days. Which oh, you really did. Food. And I, I saw every single one. Yeah. And I got, listen, I... I respect it. And I do believe you're right. That is not sustainable. Um, you know, us being health coaches and you being my wellness pharmacist, you can tell people that's great to do for a little while. And you're right. It does teach yeah, dip- discipline. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I will also uh, say, will I ever do it again? Probably not. No. Oh, that's, that's, there's gotta be, but you learned something new, right? There's gotta be a balance. Exactly. In there somewhere, right? So it's, that's, that's all like lifestyle and wellness is all about. Mm-hmm. It's all about finding that balance. So um, uh, anything else you want to leave our audience with Taylor, anything that, uh, you missed out anything that we, you want to chat about. We're, we're always here to listen. You know that. I think my biggest thing is use your pharmacist. Um, use us because we, I mean, what do they say? What do they say in pharmacy school that we are the last person, the last healthcare provider between you and your medication. Um, so, you know, you see your doctor, they prescribe the medication. You will see us right before you begin taking that medication or that supplement or, you know, whatever it is. Um, even if it's something you're not taking a medication for, you will see us prior to going home. Um, we're a wealth of information. We know if we don't know the answer, we know where to find stuff. Um, and again, this is for everything. This is for pharmaceutical meds. This is for supplements. This is for diet, exercise. I mean, anything. Um, I think pharmacists are extremely underutilized. Um, so yeah, that's my biggest thing that I hope everyone takes away is find a pharmacist ask your pharmacist um, and use them because that's what we're here for. Yeah. And remember you see your pharmacist uh, 12 times a month for every monthly refill versus seeing a doctor once or twice a year. Okay. So uh, you see us the most. So Taylor Gardner, uh, finder at Stonebriar Pharmacy. She's our wellness pharmacist. Any sort of questions you have for her about that? She's always there. Um, Taylor, I really appreciate your time coming on here with Thank you today. You I know so much. It's, it's a awesome. Sunday, so it's difficult. And, I just watched my Byron boys, uh, you know, win a, a big win against Union Brown. I checked today, the so. score before. I was like, good, be good. Happier. You're gonna see what kind of mood I was gonna be, and I, my shirt would have been out the window somewhere if that was the case. So, don't you worry. And um, yeah, man, I'll uh, I'll I'll add uh, Taylor's uh, in yeah. social media on the bottom of the description. Sounds Taylor good. Gardner, thank you so you. much. Good seeing Close you. The chat. Thank you for listening. 
if you enjoyed the podcast, consider giving us a five-star review anywhere that you get your episodes. Follow us at Sports Pharmacy Pod, as well as me, your host, at Dr. Mixalot. Join our Discord server for more interactions with me and fellow listeners. As always, stay well, stay hydrated, and I will catch you next time. <laughs>